this is a presentation on changing the storage under the kitchen sink in a Safari Continental 2000. But it would be the same for probably any other motorhome. So what you can see here is just the way the system looked from the factory probably. There was a P-trap that goes into a sidewall that is a triangular area that's uh, inaccessible from the counters. Uh, the tape measures are just to show the depth and heights and so forth in case others might find it interesting. I had installed a uh, garbage or trash can that came out on a slide already so that that worked quite well but we have a, or my wife has an instapot and an air fryer which are quite large uh, appliances and they they're not really any place, place that we could find to store it easily in in the kitchen area so I wanted to expand the, the area and one of the things that was a problem was the way they had designed the plumbing the plumbing simply used up a lot of the space needlessly and that's what can be seen here so this is what was done in the end there was quite a bit of storage added the gray box that you see on the top hasn't got the fascia put onto it yet or the oak uh, so forth uh, trim but uh, that's a you know, tray that rolls out that I'll show you the garbage collection on the right side rolls out the left side there is a tray that goes all the way to the back that rolls out as well and then that vertical it's not complete as far as like finishing but that vertical post you see sticking up that's holding in a rotating tray that comes out and another storage area is there so I removed that sidewall and I'll go through that and show you how I did that it wasn't it wasn't difficult one of the things that was time consuming was the I found problems as I went through with the plumbing and I'll go through that so here it is with the trays rolled out you can see the one it rotates like a lazy Susan uh, you can put something on it rotate it back but you have to have whatever was on the bottom tray off first but we didn't consider that to be too much of a problem here it is with like a toaster and this air dryer is on that tray there uh, there it is pulled out now you remove the toaster and the air dryer and then you can swing the Instapot out. So I'll change that little block of wood. It's just there to, as I said, just temporarily while I work out a different design for that. And here's the tray pulled out. It's not that deep, but it's deep enough to hold cans and pet stuff and I don't know, I suppose coffee or you know bags of coffee whatever it is uh, but it's more than used to be there anyway that tray at the back is really a block so that items don't go past that front that rear portion because that plumbing is back there now you could put like small things in that little tray at the back if they're not very high so here we have the sidewall pulled out uh, under the cabinet and of course there's kind of a mess and you can see if you look carefully there's two white tubes there and somebody had put two together for some reason uh, with a, a barb splice and then stuck it in there and this whole system was I think kind of jury rigged uh, because that slide moves in and out I should have said that there's a slide here that is a very very heavy piece of tubing that's used for the drain for the sink side so I think it was a bad design, but it is designed by Safari that way. If you look carefully here, you can see a rubber coupling. So all the shear stress is on that coupling, and it's clamped down with, you know, pipe, uh, plumber strapping and all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, it's kind of cobbled together. The other thing that's odd about this, you can see the coupling here, you can, and you can see the support. That rounded piece at the top, that used to be where probably it was manufactured and that's what they used and then they for some reason they damaged something put this extra piece of pipe in and then you know the usual RV salute tech solutions this is what they come up with this mess so here it is removed at the back now to get at this the slide has to be all the way in and then it there's a fitting that unscrews there and all I did was screw in a new fitting that was an ABS fitting now one of the things I'll mention in this is that I could probably be a long presentation but you know skip it if you don't want to listen to all of this the uh, 
uh, some RV place or one is manufactured, they used a fitting from JB, uh, with, uh, JB Industries, which is standard one and a half inch inside diameter and a very thin wall outside diameter. And this pipe that you can see here is that uh, sink connection. The problem with this is that's ABS on the left and that J, JB on the right, and they put some kind of shim in the middle to allow it to use this RV plumbing. I, why they would do that, I have no idea. But that makes it impossible to buy, buy fittings. I looked everywhere for these things, and they had a few at various places, but I didn't want to deal with it. I just switched it all over to ABS, and I'll show you that in this design here. So here's what the manufacturer that is if you needed to replace it. I got rid of the white tube. That was very heavy and put a lot of strain on this pipe and it just didn't work well. So what I did was I bought a barb fitting, screwed it in that ABS piece that I told you about and glued that and then double clamped it. I bought this at Home Depot and it's a, it's a light pipe but it's used for it can be used for you know draining water and that sort of thing from pools, I think. I bought mine at the end of the reel and it was flattened out and it didn't really straighten out. But you could use a different type of, uh, what do you call it, like a drain pipe if you wanted to, but this worked better. One of the things I found was that this thing had been leaking for years and the hot water connection that you could see, let's see, uh, in the back, against the wall uh, was leaking it. This took a great deal of work to straighten out. I finally just cut the end off and replaced it with a uh, whatever type of pipe that is, PVC, I'm not sure. But anyway, it just screws on and you heat the original tubing, slide it and double clamp it and that'll never leak now. Uh, so the, the, the other fittings had shrunk inside their rubber fittings and they were dripping. I walked by the motorhome one time and I heard the pump start up so I knew there was a leak there. But finding it, and I've heard other people have problems with this, but finding it is difficult. It's very difficult to get in the back there. So here it is with the drain pipe extended, this mesh kind of pipe. Uh, I think it's inch and a quarter inside diameter. It's a little bit smaller than what the the other pipe was. The other pipe is very large, but then with the sizing down that they did with the barb fittings and that it was maybe an inch and a half. I did a test on this. It'll drain the sink without any problem in about 30 seconds. Uh, in the house it does about uh, maybe 15 seconds. But there it was never, never a problem with it uh, draining. Uh, so here it is with the hooked up to the T connection that's going to go in there and there has to be an air vent on there that was originally there so that is what you see here. Where I could have done better on this was I rerouted those hot water lines and cold water lines and so forth because we just and tied everything up properly. But I should have had that vent straight up and down. I didn't want to drill another hole and, and maybe well, I wouldn't weaken it too much but I didn't want to really drilling more holes in there and rewrote that. So I left it as it was, but it did cause a bit of a problem when I put the rails in for the slides for this drawer. So if you can do that straight, that would be a better way to do it. What I also did was took a block of hardwood, created a little uh, jig for it, and then clamped it, and that kept it from, and then held it up like this. That keeps it from bending or kinking and, and so forth, and it works well. What I would do if I was to do this again, I'd probably do it anyway, is I'll go to a hydraulic place or one of these places do fittings and I'll make two right angle sections of swivel hose and have it, uh, you know, with the ABS pipe and just a like a 15 inch piece of hose instead of this thing. But it works and there's no problem with it. Uh, here is the uh, P-trap. Instead of coming sideways and straight at an angle, which I don't know why they would do that, but anyway, this thing goes straight to the back, runs along the back wall and through it at the back corner. That allows you to put all this extra equipment in here. What I did for this corner piece then, because now I'd freed up the opening under the corner of the sink, is I made with a, a, my, a welded, pardon me, a triangular rotating bracket or carrier on a piece of pipe. So, but if you don't have a welder, and I don't think everybody would have, it wouldn't be difficult to make something like this using aluminum and just brackets from Home Depot. This doesn't have to be very heavy. It's only carrying a few pounds, but you do have to support this because it's only held on, on two dimensions, right? So you have to be able to uh, put the 
a weld will hold this solidly, but if you're going to use like a bracket, you know, you're going to have to use a triangular bracket on it, and that would work, you know, triangular as in three-sided bracket. Uh, there it is mounted. I used blocks initially, then I made a metal bracket for it, uh, again welded it, but you could use blocks. One thing you have to watch out for is that uh, you have to cut away some of the bracing for that wall that was that holds up the ply. Um, and you have to make sure that this thing, of course, clears, and it's a lot of fiddling around. It's, it's easy to do if you do it correctly, <laughs> but I didn't do it correctly the first time. And it has to be held on two sides on that top, otherwise it'll pull away and tilt. That's why I made a bracket for it. And finally, uh, the slide. So how this works is there's a, and I put in a new piece of wood here that goes front to back and it's a lot larger. Directly underneath the seat, sink now, there's a slide that comes all the way out and that you can put items on, put it back in. That rotating plate there will come out if nothing's on the bottom slide, which isn't too much of a problem because uh, and so forth. So here it is with the uh, everything installed in there and you can see the garbage collection out. I changed the the uh, that, that piece of wood there. That's This is mainly just to show you the rails and all that stuff that's there right now. Uh, finally the last thing to note is in mounting the drawer that I built at the top you have to offset that so it'll clear the door when the box is open. That's why you see that little block of wood on the left hand side. The same is true for the slide at the bottom. Make sure that if you mount this sort of thing that you've got enough clearance. One of the things that was difficult to do was to get all the measurements very accurately. And what I'll do possibly when I get this all finished is I'll, I'll put the measurements that I use down. It's very uh, very close to almost not fitting. So if you're going to do this for any special cookery that you have, you want to make sure you got the right measurements and so forth uh, to get it to clear the drawer at the top and the sides and all that sort of thing. So that's about it. It works very well. It does what it's supposed to do. You can put this this equipment and use it. It found a problem at the back that I was able to sort out and, and fix. So if you have any questions, just post them and I'll try and answer them. Uh, the finishing isn't done. I'm going to put hardwood across the front or oak and that sort of thing, but I want to get this done without a few minutes, otherwise it'll just slip into the bit bucket of things to do that don't get done. Okay, thanks a lot.